Hello friends, hi. Uh, so it gives me a great amount of pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Asha Rani. Asha Rani has secured a fantastic rank six in NEET SS OBG this year. And uh, with a new pattern, with a huge degree of uncertainty, uh, there was a lot of doubt regarding how to prepare, how to go about, what sort of questions will be asked. And uh, I must say, Asha has done extremely well, you know, uh, handling a lot of stress from different uh, situations at home, personal life, everything. And I think she's done a fabulous job. And uh, Asha is very special to me and the entire search list team because uh, she's been in constant touch with us, you know, talking to us, asking uh, about us. And, and uh, there are some students uh, in whom we feel a huge amount of joy, you know, when they do really well. And Asha is one of them. And uh, thank you so much, Asha, for being here with us today. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot. So, Asha, how does it feel to talk and do really well in the exam? I had never thought that I'll top, sir, because uh, as uh, I have been in constant touch with you and I have been telling you how much stressful this preparation was. So all I just wanted uh, was just one seat and I was just looking forward to it. So I, I never thought uh, that, uh, you know, uh, I was not looking for a top rank, basically. I was just looking for one seat because last year I had got uh, uh, a rank of all India rank of 64. So I landed up nowhere. So it was a border line rank so this time i i i did everything that i could do to just get one seat hey, that's fantastic uh, asha so uh, what do you plan to do what what uh, what do you i said oncology dani uh, oncology sir and any idea where you want to uh, uh, you would you ask for a special preference for any institute sir i will be discussing that with my family Good, good, good. Uh, Asha, so uh, I must ask you one thing. Uh, why gynec oncology and why did you want to do an MCH? Because OBG itself is considered as an end speciality. Uh, what gave you the extra push to pursue an MCH in gynec oncology? Sir, so, uh, while I was choosing uh, uh, gynec on, uh, of then gynec as my, uh, you know, uh, postgraduate uh, for, for my MD, actually I was, so this was a, uh, you know, choice of exclusion. I excluded out all the other uh, branches and I ended up with the pediatrics and obstetrics. So I was a gold medalist in pediatrics uh, during my MBBS time. So I had to decide which subject I have to take. So just because, so at that time, I was not at all thinking of studying further. So just because OBGY is an end branch. So that was my criteria to select OBGY instead of pediatrics. Because at that time, it, this was in my mind that I do not want to study further. And I will just do my uh, MS degree in OBS and Gynec and then I will not study further. So that was my, you know, <laughs> initial. But when I was uh, pursuing my MS, in, uh, I had done my MS from Nair Hospital, Mumbai. So while I was doing it, so we had seen uh, cancer patients and we used to do everything for other patients. But cancer patients, we, uh, we just used to take the biopsy and we used to refer those patients. Uh, we never, you know, managed those cases. So I had this feeling that I do not want to refer these patients. I want to treat these patients. I just do not want that. I, I, I just didn't like the idea that uh, something is there and you're not doing anything about it and you're just sending them. So I did not like this idea and I was like, I want to do something. Then I came to know. So before this, uh, tiny oncology was not a separate branch. It has started Absolutely. recently. So... Yes. So my uh, MS was very, uh, my residency was very hectic since I was the only JR in my unit uh, in the first, second and third year. So in a BMC hospital, if you are only one JR, that also in I, can that, so I cannot imagine doing anything else or thinking any, about anything else except my residency and my thesis and all and getting through my exams. So after uh, six months of bond, when I was in KEM, uh, again, I saw one patient. Uh, she was uh, around 40 years of age, uh, age perimenopausal, and uh, she had gone to one or two. Uh, she had this, uh, you know, uh, uh, symptoms, and they were not specific, some non-specific specific symptoms she was having and she was having it for three months and she had also gone to one dm gastroenterologist 
and nobody had examined her so basis on the basis of her symptoms i examined that patient i did a pr and i came to know that it is stage 4a whatever the cancer it was either it was ca rectum or either it was ca uh, cervix it was 4a and i was so disheartened and i felt so bad the patient the relative they were in shock how can this happen they were just having some non specific complaints and nobody you know nobody examined them so that Sorry. Um, Hard. Yeah, I I felt so bad. I I was like, "Ki, this can't be diagnosed." You know, you have to be vigilant about these things. If something non-specific is there, you should at least have that broader area, and you should rule out certain things, and you should at least examine your patient. So at that time, I had this thing that I want to do something in this, and I knew I have not done anything. So. i tried to you know ask people around so what can be done and then nothing was there when i started uh, looking out for the material nothing was there nothing was av- available for gani oncology so i was very disheartened but somehow i asked from people in uh, tmh or and uh, i started preparing so that time i just studied novac but one month before the exam when the notification had come when the admit cards have come the <laughs> loved the exam so exactly exactly yeah. oh but asha yeah. just before the so senior spoke, spoken about your residency right where did you uh, do your undergraduate and post graduation can you uh, i i did my uh, undergraduate so my father is in army so oh, i yeah so um, so we both so are army kids by the way then Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I did not know that. Yeah. So I had done my uh, uh, MBBS from uh, Baba Farid University, that is in Faridkot, Punjab, mm-hmm. and then I had given All India exam, and via All India, I got uh, Mumbai, and there I did my residency. Great, 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 great. Yes. Um, so Asha, so coming back to the uh, preparation, uh, what books did you use to prepare specifically? Uh, so when I started, uh, because at that time uh, you have to, it was a uh, so it changes every time. Your know, the pattern changes. They do anything, you know. It is not fixed. Crazy, so, crazy problem. Yeah, I at that time, yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> it was so disheartening to see that they had clubbed and I cannot do anything. So I I got a very bad rank, you know. I had so much of negative marking. I had no idea of reproductive medicine. I had never studied it. so i got a rank of 500 and something but i was like but i got a hint that if i prepare for it then i can go for it and one mistake which i did at that time uh, at that time i came to do about search test but since it was only one month left and we were preparing for reproductive medicine also so i was not confident on joining uh, this so i continued with my infertility preparation and try somehow i gave the exam after the results had come so after dr ashwarya we saw her interview so the first thing that i did i subscribed to search test and uh, i you know so this was my prime source for uh, oncology because uh, the video lectures which were taken by dr alka by dr pinaki they were a class they were they were too good you know so i got a grasp of uh, oncology after listening to those lectures and after you know i had uh, completed berikin hackers for oncology because at that time super specialty based exam was there exactly. so it was necessary because i had no knowledge i had no idea i had to do that and uh, dr ashwarya she had also you know advised to complete all those things so i had whatever she had uh, i listened to her interview very carefully and whatever whatever she had advised i followed that i completed berikin hackers i got Uh, i attended the lectures in search test which were taken by dr alka and dr pinaki and i followed um, the mcq bank so this is how so my oncology preparation is hardcore based uh, on search test okay and, and um, you found the uh, obstetrics obg patient bank useful yes yeah, sir i had uh, actually i had prescribed for all the q banks so they are helpful because you need to solve questions to get a grasp of that topic when you study some topic you think that you know this topic but when it comes to mcqs and checking your concepts then we do not find you know good uh, uh, a level of mcqs that is needed so for practice so this is very good that you have introduced the mcq banks so it is very necessary it is essential it is required it is not available that easily but you had provided it so it is very good for the student and i'll highly recommend that they should you know uh, practice the uh, practice all the mcqs bank uh, asha so if somebody is starting new uh, they just starting fresh preparing for next neat ss um, what books would you recommend them to start with and Study considering the new pattern. 
Yes, sir. So actually now you know the exam is EG exit level exam. So now what I think is they do not uh, go after the big books like American hackers because this year they had hard, they had, I was so disheartened during the exam and um, I was so, I was so sad because I, for one and a half year, I had read oncology. I had given so many exams. I had put so much into it. And in the final exam, there were hardly four or five questions in oncology. So I was so disheartened. So I was like, after reading so much, what are they asking? And they're not even asking something out of 150 questions, at least ask some 10 or 15 questions. Forget about 25 or something question, which I was, uh, you know, uh, guessing they might ask. So it was a very less proportion of questions which they had asked, both in gynae oncology and reproductive medicine. So it was all clinical, you know. So those who are, who uh, are starting, they should not doubt their preparation. They should start and whatever they are, uh, you know, uh, they should do their residency uh, in a good way, basically. And they should start doing the MCQs and they should do the guidelines. OK, so now Williams have become essential because uh, considering this pattern, and I think this pattern will continue the next year also. So Absolutely. Williams is the book that they should do. Sakshi Aroda is a book that they should do. And uh, your video lectures for Ghani Oncology, they are best. And they should follow the QBank with it. And they should do your QBank. So uh, I think that will be sufficient for them. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Asha has kind of elaborated it. So use uh, your Williams along with uh, Sakshi Arora and the uh, OBGY uh, video lectures and the MCQ band, I think that would be kind of sufficient uh, for this year's preparation. Uh, it looks easy when we tell it, but to be honest, really, to read Williams, checking about 80 to 100 hours of video lectures, solving around uh, 2000 questions at least twice or thrice is not easy, let me tell you. My personal advice for everyone who is studying or starting right now is that you will have to read from textbooks you can't avoid reading from textbooks uh, that is uh, non-negotiable but at the same time so you, you will have to solve mcqs at least 30 to 50 a day it kind of gets you into the group uh, uh, it's an easy way of doing it and i think that kind of evaluates your knowledge it mcqs you know, uh, basically uh, they they strengthen your concepts they strengthen your preparation and they make sure that you have understood something and you will not make mistakes and we should you know uh i always i i had this one book so what if i'm doing such uh, if i'm doing uh, mcqs and if i'm making a mistake so i had already last year only i had this, i had uh, done this groundwork so i used to write it down so this was very helpful during you know the last days one or two weeks is left and you have to revise and you cannot go through everything but if you have written it somewhere so i am that kind of person i need that thing if i have written it somewhere then it becomes very easy for me and it was a boon for me because i used to revise before aims i used to revise it before my exams i used to revise it so it became so easy and so handy for me to at least find everything in one place because whatever mistakes i had done i had noted that down i had noted that down so that uh, helped a lot Great, great, great. Uh, Asha, thank you so much uh, for, you know, telling about all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, the preparation and the entire way. I think students are going to be extremely benefited from this. So coming to the lighter side, how have you celebrated your great time? So actually, it, I just took some time to, to let it, you know, I'm just letting it to sink in because uh, I wasn't believing it. I gave my roll number to my brother, my husband, my father. And I was like, and my mentors also, and my friends also. And I'm like, you just check if this is mine. <laughs> because I was, I was, I was like, maybe I had, because I had prepared well. I had read so much. I have been preparing from 2020. So I have to put in that hard work that is, that is required. The content I have covered, everything I have done. Only thing that happened, uh, which was not in my favor, was the exam. I was so stressed. I got panicked during the exam. So this I would like to advise everyone. So whenever you are preparing, be confident about your pre uh, preparation. You have to back yourself. You have to motivate yourself. You should feel good about yourself. This is the very high intensity exam. The seats are very less. So even if you have to give, because I got uh, a rank of 500, then I again prepared and I got a rank of 64. And if I would have given up, then I would not have been talking to you right now. So it matters. 64, 
pretty pretty you know exponential uh, uh, this thing it's not just a linear growth i think it's that's absolutely fantastic the way you you know kind of climbed up with each and every preparation and with you it kind of feels personal because i've been in you know i've been in constant talk with you just on our phone multiple number of times uh, interacted yes, with you and, and 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 i think i think that's absolutely fantastic uh, asha um, again where do you see yourself 10 years down the line so uh, i when i came to know that there is something in uh, uh, there is something that i can do uh, in this uh, you know in this field so i am so much interested and i want to explore it and i want to be a very good uh, gynecologist oncologist not on the just not on the surgical point i also want to work on the preventive side because uh, females they uh, take uh, they keep themselves as you know they do not give themselves priority ever they are concerned about everyone and uh, they will not tell you what from you know uh, we can do it uh, if a cancer is diagnosed on an uh, early stage as you know so we can you know it is curable it is no more an incurable disease so much research is going so many things are going so uh, i also want to work on the preventive aspect making patients aware and making them know then uh, that uh, you know taking care of themselves is important and they should focus on screening and it should be prevented Absolutely. on that part also i want to work Yes, sir. So, having spoken to a lot of uh, this, I'll move my fourth or fifth interview with the guy in the Congo topper. Sorry, yeah, OBG needed this topper. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Aishwarya first. Aishwarya created the question bank as well. Um, yes, Aishwarya, yes. Chandrima, Kanmani, you. Yes, sir. One yes, sir. very common aspect which I've found in people, uh, I think Caroline also last time she. Uh, one very common thread among all these people who are preparing or you know have topping in a conco is an inherent need to prevent these cancers and the fact that you know women kind of tend to ignore their problems. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. My own neighbor, she had CA breast right now. She's right now. I, I just visited the hospital about two two days ago. she had a malignancy but she was taking care of her brother and extended family so she kind of thought that you know talking about it would mean that she is talking about her problems and it was very sad because women in this country tend to ignore their problems and i think that is something we should uh, we should kind of remedy and i'm so glad that um, asha is doing such a great job and she has good intentions in her mind and uh, i'm also glad on a very personal level because i believe that uh, search this is a is is more of a family organization i think you would have realized you anyone can you know uh, uh pick up the phone and you know talk to us any time of the day and it feels really personal and i feel really happy that i'm able to be a part of asha's journey thank you so much asha for being here with us today absolute pleasure yeah but- one more thing like uh, we uh, i also had seen one patient when i was doing my my bond in km and she was just 26 year old patient she had this uh, retinoblastoma she had come to our opd because she was uh, 22 weeks of gestation and uh, tmh has sent us for termination of pregnancy because she was pregnant and we, they need to carry out the treatment so when i had examined that patient she had krukenberg tubers you so you know she had come to that stage so i felt so so bad for that patient so every time i have seen such patients from inside i have this thing yaar i need to do something i really want to do something so i'm so happy i'm so glad that it's really it's really sad i mean i'm i'm glad you yes, could be a part yes, of the journey yes sir and hopefully asha does uh, get a seat of a choice uh, in a Thank place you, where a uh, uh, heart likes it and uh, we believe that uh, things will change in this country and more women will uh, benefit from this new specialty in gynecology and i always yes, believe sir. that uh, uh, when a specialist operates or specialist treats the problem the results are always better and uh, gynecology and thanks as a specialty to you, sir and thanks to so you have been so kind you have been so generous when i was uh, i needed all the information regarding the counseling and all and uh, any hour of the day if i message you you were there to support and you were you know you were there to help so this kind of generosity is not you know, yeah, no, it's uh, not you know as i told you to... as i told you we are an almost a not for profit organization we make our yeah, mcq bank what... yes very yes, affordable sir. we want so, to we are I, that is very I, I commendable have... sir that is very no, common it's, it's just that it's just that it we, is, we sir, because be that you way. you don't know you are helping so many people out there 
Thank you so much, Aira. <laughs> I think I should end this interview because she is starting to flatter me right now. Uh, anyway, no, sir, not at all, sir. Uh, thank you, Asha. Uh, best wishes thank to you, you so much, uh, and your family. And uh, hope to see you as a, one of the topmost gynecologists a few years down the line. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir.